not exist but do and we're happy that they do a top 10 list and by the way Nathan if people are wondering about the cars behind us these are the cars of the week these are the cars that we're reviewing so if you see a car behind us you know that there is a TFL review coming or has already been posted to one of our YouTube channels yeah either TFL car or TFL truck all right so let's get right to it these are cars that we've had some experience with we've either driven or we've personally interacted with some way and let's get right to it. Number 10, what is it? That is one that I've personally interacted with, but not driven, and probably never will. That's the Ford GT. Whew, what a car. Yeah, what a beautiful car. When that rolled out in Detroit, I was breathtaking, literally. I, I, I had no idea that Ford had the cojones to try and build something like that, and, and they've done it. Now, people may be wondering why this is a car that should not exist. And the reason for it not existing is that the last GT actually languished on dealership floors. Yeah, it didn't sell very well. However, once they were done with production, those vehicles became somewhat priceless. And very collectible. Yeah. Uh, but nevertheless, think about the fact that Ford builds like Explorers, Escapes, pickup trucks, and all of a sudden this, you know, 600 plus horsepower supercar. Where did that come from? Yeah, and that's the crazy thing. They actually took an EcoBoost engine. This isn't some fancy V8 or V12 or anything like that. It's an EcoBoost V6, and that's crazy. We would never expect them to do it, and they've done it. And Nathan got to chase it down I-70 for one of our prototype hunting videos. Yeah, there's still people out there that think we set that up somehow. Yeah. It's the weirdest damn thing, but okay. How'd whatever. you come up on that car? Well, we were we actually passed it once, and I was telling Andre, "Oh my God, I think we passed a GT," and you know we weren't too sure. And as we were going through the tunnel, all of a sudden one just popped out right in front of us, and we were like two baboons, you know, just freaking out, blah, 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 and we went after it, and we caught one. So I'm going to make a prediction, Nathan. Now Ford originally said that they were only going to build 250 of these bad boys. Then they upped the number to 400. And here's the truth about automobile sales, right, and manufacturing. You do not make money by not selling cars. <laughs> so for all of you lucky ones who are one of the first 250 to get this car, I suspect there'll be more. If you're one of those 250 watching this video, we would love to get our hands on one. And if you do give us one, you can have the shirt right off my back. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Carl Brower. Yeah, I, I'll even throw $20 on top of that. You and me, right in there. Okay, let's move on. All right, number nine. It's the Fisker Karma. Yeah, that was one that actually went on the launch, <laughs> and that was a car that should have been built by Lincoln, right? That yeah. was That had so much road presence, right? What company puts on 22s <laughs> off a car that comes off the production facility? I still think by today's standards, it's a beautiful looking car. Yeah, it was gorgeous. It was um, a funny hybrid kind of vehicle, right? Because it had a GM turbocharged four-cylinder in the yep. front, so and it also had like reclaim bamboo <laughs> and it had reclaimed wood and it was this really like weird mishmash of environmentally friendly yet really beautiful yet like dysfunctional company and, and it should have just never worked and it sort of kind of did just for a little while now here's the crazy part though they're gone but they're now back and we're going to be seeing all these different versions of the fisker karma and the company from fisker coming in from all over the world i mean everything from dropping a big v8 in the old ones to building an all-electric yeah, one. Yeah, Bob Lutz is doing that. Yeah, that's right. The Chinese are building it. But that just is testament to the fact that it was a beautifully designed car that you know should have uh, been successful. It was just probably one of those cars that was the wrong time, wrong place, wrong company. Not easy to start on your own. Next time, guys, call forward. Okay, BMW X6M. Yeah, well, the X6... You could probably make a case for it, but why, oh why, put a massive engine into a car that barely seats four, that has no utility, that's None. 15 feet high. That was launch control. I got it. <laughs> Yay, I did it. Yay, Roman gets a cookie. <laughs> and there's the time, 4.41, so it's even faster with launch control. <laughs> 
it, it's just, it's insane to me. It's it, the idea that, that you have no back seat in an SUV, you have no carrying capacity in an SUV, yet you have trackability that's akin to a sports car and an SUV. You know what that's like? It's like in Europe where they race trucks. Not pickup trucks, but real Full trucks. Full-size big yeah. trucks. Yeah, that, that makes no sense either, but yet it's way cool, right? Yeah, When they true. squirt the water under the brakes because they get so hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the X6M is like. It shouldn't exist, and yet it does, uh, and we're all better for it. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan, but I am a big fan of number seven, which is the Cadillac CTS V Wagon. And we've mentioned it many times before because we love it, and it should have never been built. And frankly, because it was, we're better for it. Yeah, if you're a dad and you have to go get a wagon because your wife makes you get one, then, you know, this is a car that will Over 550 her. horsepower, hell yeah, that's a car. Rear drive, manual <laughs> transmission option. Oh yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Come on, get Junior in the car. Let's throw the bike in the car. We'll get there in no time. Exactly. And it's got, look honey, you could fit the car seats, you could fit all your stuff. And it's a luxury car too. Wink. Yeah, I, I love it. I just, just It's so bat crazy that I, I, I just think that that was terrific. Unfortunately, no longer being built. Maybe, who knows? Maybe they'll decide yeah, they, to do it again. Yeah, they sold like 500 to journalists. Yeah, <laughs> that <that's> was it. <laughs> yeah, even Roman and I were thinking, how can we pull our money to find one of these? This is back in the days before the Hellcat. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, number six, the Tesla Model X. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, <laughs> why do you want a crossover with Falcon Doors? <laughs> Falcon Doors! It's the future. <laughs> yeah, you could make some kind of a logical argument that in tight parking spaces you can get Junior in to the Model X. But, you know, the amount of engineering and the amount of time that they wasted coming out with that car. Because, let's face it, no matter how great... Falcon doors are, sliding doors are always going to be better. <laughs> Actually, I think it would have been kind of cool if they put like little mini sliding doors on it. But uh, it's it's such a bizarre thing that they built with this Model X. It's not really an SUV, but it is an SUV. It's not really a big wagon, but it is a big wagon. It's called Falcon doors. It should have never been built, but it's kind of cool that it does exist. It's cool to know that it's out there. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's all electric, so you get a lot of range. Uh, and it's crazy expensive, too. Uh, it's got the ludicrous mode, you know, it, it, it's just, there's just no reason for that thing, right? No market niche that is begging out for an electric crossover with Falcon doors that goes 0 to 60 in like 3 seconds. <laughs> but thank God it does. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And by the way, guys, before we're finished with this, you can always throw your comments down below. If you completely disagree and say, Falcon doors are the wave of the future, then write it down below. I mean, we'd love to read that and laugh. All right, number five, Nathan. And we both got to drive this on a racetrack, actually on the Formula One track in Austin, Texas. Circuit of the Americas. Americas yeah. That was one of the best days. That was the, Work didn't suck that day, that's for sure. No, the Grand Cherokee with the SRT badge with the big engine. Holy cow. Basically think of it as an all-wheel drive wagon that has been drinking a little too much and at the same time, it's been doing powerlifting. <laughs> Just a beast! A little too much Jack Daniels. Yeah, I mean, why would you put a 465 horsepower engine in a Jeep? Like, it makes no sense. You don't need that off-road. You don't need that off-road. No, not at all. <laughs> but see, here's the crazy part about that vehicle. Um, Center mounted exhaust pipes. Not anymore. Can't tell no, 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 no. That's the old one. They they replaced the old one with the center mounted exhaust with ones on the side, so you can tow with it. It's built to tow. It can go on light dirt. It does have all wheel dirt. What is light dirt? Light dirt is a sprinkling like, of dirt on the ground. Like some sand got blown onto the pavement. Actually, and they can drive in snow. I've driven one in snow. <laughs> Very carefully. And Go down ice. Yeah, it's nice. No, it, it does have a really good all-wheel drive system, but the bottom line is, why did Jeep get this as opposed to, say, Dodge with their Durango? Wouldn't that make a little bit more Hell sense? Yeah. But still, regardless, it's awesome. It looks so mean, and especially in white. It looks like a stormtrooper. And we did a 0-60 to 60 time on it, and we just come out of a BMW, I think it was the... M6, right, where you had to do all this convoluted crap to get the thing to go into launch control. Not Jeep, man. Push button. your button. <laughs> Hit a button. Floor it. Go oh, fast. Goes. Yeah, and it was fast. Push the launch control button. It says to launch, press brake and apply full throttle. Easy enough. Easy. That is the easiest launch control in the world, and we're already at 60. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. It was fast.
fast. And and that's kind of the bottom line. I mean, yeah, it's a Jeep, so it doesn't make any sense. I mean, what words don't belong together? Rocket and Jeep. Put those together. But it is a rocket that has the Jeep emblem on it. All right. What other two words don't belong together? Bentley and off-road. And oh yet, my God. <laughs> the Bentayga was born. Ugh. This is a bizarre vehicle in my book. But then you got the chance to drive it off-road and like bash it in the sand and play with it. So, so now it seems to make perfect sense, right? With, you, with all these other expensive... Alfa Romeo's coming out with one. Maserati has one. Rolls Royce. Rolls, Rolls Royce has announced one. But back in the day when Bentley said, we're going to build a W12 650 horsepower off-road <laughs> machine, everybody went like, what?! And yet they're going to sell every single one they make and then some. There's going to be a huge demand, especially overseas. I would imagine in Dubai it's going to be a very popular vehicle. The bottom line is, I mean, just a few years ago, Bentley was known for cars. Old man cars, you know, where he smoked a cigar and perhaps had like a scotch. Wrong. What's wrong with that? Nothing. But going off-road in one of those, see, I always come back to the thing saying, you know, I'm pretty sure a Range Rover would do pretty much everything that this car would do, pretty much. And it's still really nice, but at the same time, there are some people like the Cardassians who want to drive something that, frankly, doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm, I'm sorry, any car with a decanter in the back seat and a cigar humidifier just screams like rich old fart. And I'm okay with the humidifier, so I guess I'm a rich old <laughs> fart at heart. Okay, let's move on. All right, Nathan, number three car is right behind us, and I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall when that got greenlit, right? Yeah. When they had to present the car to... FCA's CEO and they said, yeah, we've got this uh, Dodge and we've got the most powerful engine ever built in a muscle car, 707 horsepower, uh, and yeah, we're going to put pretty thin tires on it and we're going to call it a Hellcat and it's going to sell like hotcakes. Build it! <laughs> Hell yeah! Only, Why can't there be more Dodge. people like that? Only Dodge, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, FCA, they've got balls, I'll tell you that. And you know what? At the end of the day, how many of you people, even the ones who don't really like the car very much, can still respect the fact that something with over 700 horsepower exists in North America and can be bought with, you know, not a crazy amount of money? That's impressive. All right, number two, Nathan, and there's a story behind this, right? A lot yeah. of engineers will agree that putting anything more than 300 horsepower through the front wheels is just stupid. Yes. Because you can't steer and drive a car with more than 300 horsepower at the same time. What you end up getting is torque steer and you end up with a car that wants to go off the road. Even with a limited slip, there are many, many issues with torque and everything else. And yet, the Civic Type R is coming. Thank God it is. <laughs> Now, I, a long time ago, I drove a, a Dodge Caliber SRT4, yep. okay, and I had like 285 horsepower going through the front wheels, and uh, it was horrible. It was just terrible. I, I mean, I just you know, go then and just keep going straight, and I was like, I don't know what to do. But from what I've been told yes. from Honda experts, yes. they say that they've got it under control and that they will be able to go around a track like you would not believe. It's not going to lift its inside leg and take a big, you know <laughs> well, what? We don't know. We don't know. But what we do know, we did get uh, exclusive, exclusive video of the interior of the vehicle. We actually have a video of that, which is really awesome that they gave us ad access. Yeah. So thank you, Honda. And uh, thank you guys, because without all of you out there, Honda wouldn't give us that access. That's right. That's right. Um, so that's, I mean, that is awesome, but not quite as awesome as what you got to drive and take into yeah. the desert. This has been on a couple of our lists, but it still blows my mind. So you take like a, what is it, like a 70s or an 80s German military vehicle that was designed to have a 70 horsepower diesel engine in it. So you say to your engineer, screw that, let's put a V12 with the 650 horsepower into this chassis of an off-road vehicle. Let's give it three locking differentials. Uh, let's give it 22s and Just let's sell it for a quarter million dollars. <laughs> And you know what the people did? They buy it. And like, they built it. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, I'm trying, I'm, it's like, it. think of Mercedes Benz going, you know what, maybe we could throw a jet engine in it next and see what happens then. You know what would be even crazier? Putting portal axles on it. There you go, put portal <laughs> axles on it. You know, just, and he did just it. yeah. <laughs> or, or make it a six by six. Well, they've done that too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And thank God. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, we, not, we honestly don't know if we're ever going to see a six by six built by Mercedes Benz in our studio, of course, we always hope we will. But um, we really would love to get our hands on one of those. Could you imagine what it would do on the Goldmine Hill? Oh, I can imagine it. <laughs> and I think you guys can too. So uh, send your letters to... <laughs> Address them to Mercedes-Benz. Yes. Give TFL. <laughs> Please, Please. Give them. Yes. Um, okay, let, let, let's wind this up. So that was number one, but we always love to do a bonus. And this bonus is something that 
we don't agree on. No, we're very um, divided on this, Dennis, yes. because I think it was a vehicle that was way ahead of its time. And I think you it's think? trash, garbage, it's <laughs> horrible. Just a mistake within a mistake within a mistake. I think it was the right car, wrong brand, wrong time. Well, they don't know what it is yet. What do you want to tell them? Nissan Cross Cabriolet. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Now, I say it was the wrong vehicle, right vehicle, wrong brand, wrong time, because the Evoque convertible is selling like hotcakes, which is basically the same thing. Well, it's the same idea. They should have made it of... infin Infinity, right? Yeah. Right? And they should have waited like two more years, and it would have been in fashion. It was the first all-wheel drive convertible that you could buy. Sport, no, no, it was a, for a sports utility the convertible. That you that's could the buy. whole yeah. thing is yeah. that it's a sports utility. That's the big selling point, and I, I think they sold at least a dozen. Um, and look, I'm sorry. It was built, the rumor is, and, and a lot of people have substantiate this rumor, that Charles Gohm, the head honcho Nissan Renault, his wife wanted a convertible crossover. And voila, there it is. But think about this. You corrected me, but I think I'm actually not that off base here. Think about how many convertibles there are at that time and how mm. many of them were actually all-wheel drive. And I think there were very few, if any, all-wheel drive convertibles. See, I've stumped them. I've stumped you guys. Put it in the comments below. Yeah, I really, yeah. I, I really wanted a convertible at one point, so I did my research, and I found that I could not find even Volkswagen, right? A convertible that was all-wheel drive. And the reason for that, what? TT. Yeah, the Audi TT. The Audi TT was the only one, but that was a two-seater. Okay. Yeah, that was a two-seater. There were no four, I wanted a four-seater at that time convertible, and there were no four-seater all-wheel drive convertibles. Are you telling me that you actually shopped and saw No, I did research. Result? As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Saying check out tflcard.com for more news views. And real-world reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao. Bye-bye. <laughs>